Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we're going to be going over some deck tech brews for the release of March of the Machines. Uh, thanks to Wizards, I will be participating in the Early Access event, so I'll get to try out a bunch of these cards and demo and kind of try out these ideas. Um, as such, we are brewing up some ideas. As mentioned, they are ideas. They are not intended, and I am not claiming that this is the best deck 100% win rate in standard um really what i'm trying to do is showcase some of the new cards get a feel for them hopefully uh save us some wild cards on some mythics or stuff like that you know there's always those flashy cards that seem really cool and then you play one game with it and then you're like this is not as good as it seems or kind of highlight maybe this card is super good um so we will try them out and uh, i am focusing a little bit more on the new cards but if you have any suggestions whether for the deck itself or any new decks, ideas, you have lists of your own, feel free to share. I will be streaming all of these live on YouTube over the course of this upcoming Thursday afternoon Eastern time and Friday morning as well, uh, and then have all the gameplay up on my YouTube. Um, so for this deck, we are looking right now at a black-white Orzov Phyrexian tribal deck. So we got enough creatures that are Phyrexian that we can play all Phyrexian all day all the time super fun time um, so we're going to go through it and kind of highlight the cards itself so starting off we got evolved sleeper um while its base is not a phyrexian it is a one mana human uh you can at the second stage with two mana you it becomes a phyrexian human cleric uh keyword phyrexian there and then so this is kind of your mana sync it's probably the best aggressively slanted one drop uh, so it kind of helps in that regard there. Um, late game, you just pump a bunch of mana into it, you evolve it, and it kind of gets that value. We're also playing a couple copies of Skrelv, Defector Might. Uh, this is the Mother of Ruins uh, Phyrexian. Uh, so one mana, one one Toxics is not super relevant in this particular build. While we do have some elements, it's not the dedicated focus. But really, Skrelv's in here to protect our other cards, giving them Hexproof and Pseudo Unblockable. We are playing a couple copies of Phyrexian Missionary. So this is an early body. It could be a 2-3 life linker, put some pressure, gain you some life. But uh, mid to late game lets you just kind of kick it and rebuy some of your creatures from the graveyard. So if you're trading with a lot of stuff, for the grindier games, you get to rebuy and get some value there. Now we're going to look at a new card here. This is Grafted Butcher. So Grafted Butcher is a 2-mana two 2-2. Two -two. When it enters the battlefield, Phyrexians you control gain menace till end of turn meaning that they cannot be blocked by a single creature they have to be blocked by two or more creatures and then other phyrexians you control get plus one one so it's a lord for all your creatures and then later in the game you can sacrifice an artifact or a creature for four mana and return it from your the graveyard to the battlefield at sorcery speed so late game if it gets killed it, you could just kind of resummon it and it gets that additional value of giving menace again and the lord effect so it can kind of screw up your opponent's blockers so playing a full four with that we're also playing full four of Skrelv's hive uh, notably while it does make mites they are phyrexian mites on your upkeep and then if your opponent is corrupted meaning three or more poison counters your uh anything with toxic gains lifelink so kind of a sub toxic theme but it's more just giving you a continuous stream of both cheap creatures. Uh, there are artifacts, there are creatures you can sacrifice to the, but the Grafted Butcher. Uh, you'll see there's some other sacrifice synergy as well in the deck. Um, then the next card, or go for the throat, just three ofs, just some removal. Uh, you're gonna have to kill something in this format, I'm guessing. Uh, and then we're gonna look at a new card type. So this is, we're playing four of Invasion of Gobakan, and these are battles. So. For those of you who are unfamiliar with battles, how it works, we cast this spell. It's a permanent. Two mana. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, look at target opponent's hand. You may exile a non-land card from it. For as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may play it. And then we basically, you tax it. It's the elite spell binder uh, that's stapled onto a permanent. So how it works is this goes on your opponent's side of the battlefield. They can defend it as though they would defend a planeswalker and you can attack into it or deal damage to it uh, it has three we'll call them loyalty counters battle counters whatever you want to ca call it um so if you remove them with an effect like glissa or you uh, deal damage to it you lightning strike it 
and it goes to zero or less than zero, it transforms. And then you're able to cast this on your side of the battlefield. Now, notably, this is a cast, so your opponent can counter it on the stack. But then you get an enchantment that at the beginning of your end step, you put a 1-1 counter on each creature that attacked this turn. And it also it gives you an effect of sacrificing it, and creatures you control gain hexproof and indestructible to end of turn. So this allows you to get aggressive, make your board get even bigger, and then if your opponent tries to sweep you or have removal, you can protect your stuff as well. So attacks, pump, protection, all for two mana, which seems really great. Um, and then we are moving to our three drops. We have another new card. This is Bloated Processor. So three mana, three, two. We can sacrifice another Phyrexian, and we get to put a counter on the Bloated Processor. So notably those Skrelv Hive tokens, whatever it may be, if their opponent's trying to kill something. And then when it dies, you get to Incubate X, where X is its power. So how Incubate works, it's a token that gets created uh, with X counters on it. And then for two mana, you get to create a Phyrexian creature uh, with a power equal to the number of counters on it, effectively. Um, so it, it replaces itself in a roundabout way. Uh, lets you kind of redistribute and get big things as well. So if your opponent board wipes, you can sack everything, get the bloated uh, processor really big, get the incubate token, and then crack the incubate token. Um, we also, I'm going to highlight it here in the three drop slot, we also have Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. It's three mana or seven mana, depending on how we want to play it um, with the prototype. So it's either a three mana, three, three, or a seven mana, seven, five. Menace Lifelink Ward, uh, basically that's pay life equal to its power. So. This really should be here on the curve in the three drop slot. In the four drop slot, we got New Elish Norn. Uh, so four mana, Vigilance. Whenever a source an opponent control deals damage to you or permanent you control, notably that also uh, is like a Planeswalker, anything like that, uh, that source's controller loses two life unless they pay one. So this is another in an aggressive deck at the top end. Your opponent, like, they want to try to kill you, but they also have to keep their life open, and you're taxing them while dealing damage, which is kind of a cool effect. And then for three mana, you can sacrifice three other creatures. You exile Ellis Norn, and then return to the battlefield. You can only do this at sorcery speed. And then it flips to become a Saga. So uh, you get to incubate five times, incubate two five times, then transform all uh, incubator tokens you have. So you effectively get 10 power onto the board. Creatures you control gain plus one one and gain double strike till end of turn for chapter two. And then you destroy all other permanents except artifacts, lands, and Phyrexians. Uh, and then you exile it and then it basically flips back to Elish Norn. So this last chapter basically wipes your opponent's board and gives you just free reign to have just a huge board ideally. We're playing uh, Shield of the Apocalypse as two of because it is Phyrexian. It is a beast. And then we're also playing the other Shieldred because it's not confusing enough. We got Shelly, we got Shieldred, we got she Shelly Shellor. Um, so this is another kind of flip uh, effect. So five mana, four five menace. When it enters the battlefield, the opponent sacrifices a non-token creature or planeswalker. For five mana, you can flip the Shieldred. Its condition is sorcery, and opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. When you flip it, you get to destroy a creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. Each opponent discards three cards, then mills three cards, and then you get to mass reanimate on chapter three, put all creature cards from all graveyards uh, onto the battlefield under your control, and then you get to flip the Shieldred, and then your opponent has to sacrifice another creature. So a lot of value there, all kind of blended together. Um, so that is it for the creature package in terms of the mana base. We've got a couple cool lands in here. So because we are Phyrexian Tribal, we are playing four copies of the Seed Core. Um, it is basically a rainbow land for our Phyrexian spells. And then we also have the ability, once your opponent's corrupted, to just pump up your little dorks as well. But this is mana fixing in the deck. Uh, we also have Secluded Courtyard, naming Phyrexian, and then a single copy of the Myrex. Might be right to play a couple more Myrex, all things considered. Um, the mana base could probably support it. Uh, Part of the reason too, so there's Phyrexian Vindicator, there's Phyrexian Obliterator. I think these four drops are better, to be honest. They do a lot more things. Generally speaking, the more words on a card, the better it is. It's also easier on our mana base. While we do have a number of duels, I, I, you, they pretty much just die, like uh, an Obliterator, stuff like that. Those can be sideboard options. This is for best of one. 
that it's intended, but in sideboards, you, you could bring them in against like gruel based decks or like uh, not heavy removal decks. But I think in isolation, like Brexing Flesh Gorger is better, Shieldred's better, Elishnorn has a lot of promise, and I want to try this out as well. So that's it for the deck. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you got any cool ideas, drop them in the comments as well, and we will try out as many decks as possible. As always, if you do enjoy this content, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all easy and free ways to help out the channel. For the month of April, the entire month, any penny I make off YouTube revenue, I am donating it all to Toronto-based food banks. So if you want to do your part and help out, you can always just watch any of my videos. Uh, and like I said, every penny I make, I will be donating to uh, those who are hungry uh, as part of the food bank. In any case, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great one and hope to see you Thursday with the live one. Thanks.